Hey guys, uh, got a new project here, um, as the title states. Uh, got a 04 F-250 with a 6 liter in it, and um, uh, let's see, so the last thing that I did to this was um, head studs. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and I uh, just recently did a coolant flush with um, the Restore and the Restore Plus, the uh, chemical cleaning, and I uh, put the Extended Life coolant in it. Um, as you can see from the red, there she is. Uh, so, uh, about a week ago I ordered uh, a bunch of stuff from uh, Innovative Performance Research, I think it is, IPR. And uh, I was having some, uh, uh, not really a big issue, but I noticed uh, my uh, coolant temperature was about 20 degrees cooler, 20 to 30 degrees cooler than my oil temperature. And uh, after doing some real quick research, figured out that uh, my oil cooler is clogged. And that's kind of unfortunate because I just had all this stuff off uh, a few months back doing the head studs. So now I get to rip a lot of it back out again. And as you can see, I've already started. Uh, I meant to uh, film the teardown. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at this, done this several times. So this took me about maybe an hour yesterday. So I got the turbo out and intake manifold off basically I just need to finish up you know get the I'm gonna drain the oil out of it and then get the oil cooler in out and stuff out so um, that's pretty much where I'm at now uh, my parts just arrived today so I'm gonna try to have most of this stuff in this evening uh, and I'll go over what I got here uh, in just a minute so so that's where we're at and I'm gonna try to film the install process so Here's kind of a quick rundown on the stuff uh, that I had to take out. Obviously the air filter, hoses, you know, the turbo tubes. Let's see what else we got. Alternator. Uh, what else? That's the uh, oil filter and fuel filter housing. Um, some parts from the radiator. Uh, the fan shroud. There's the turbo underneath there and the intake. I also, uh, when I put all this crap back together last time when I was working on my head studs, um, I had a horrible exhaust leak and didn't know where it was from. Well, I figured it out real quick when I started tearing all this stuff down. I can't really see it from here, but this whole side of my intake manifold is black. So it was actually leaking at the turbo uh, exhaust inlet. Yeah, you can see that. See all the black gook everywhere pretty dirty so anyways it'll be good you know, see the whole turbo on the back sides all nasty so that'll be good to get that fixed too because uh, if I didn't have it on any if I wasn't if I was stopped at a red light um, and I didn't have it on max AC you'd get you know diesel fumes in the truck and that just really stunk so so a couple things I'm doing are um, a remote oil cooler which is again the kit that IPR makes um, that comes with a new oil cooler and it actually mounts your oil cooler um, off to the side I believe right by the battery on the passenger side of the truck so uh, it would be pretty cool to see that I've heard some good things and they actually have a video on YouTube that they show uh, towing and just regular driving with it you know they get maybe three or four degrees difference uh, between the oil and the coolant temp so that will be good and if you ever plug it up again um, then uh, it's real easy to change. You don't have to do pull all this crap off. All you do is take this little thing off the front, be like changing the battery, real nice and easy to get to. So uh, that kit actually comes with a small um, coolant filter, which is uh, you know will help immensely. But I also, while I was doing all this, decided to go ahead and get uh, their high flow coolant filter. And as I've been looking at this, um, and we'll I'll go over this as I film and stuff. But basically, the way that the coolant filter works the high flow is you plumb it in either out of band or in line with your heater well if you plumb it in line then if you have the uh, uh, what is it called max AC on then no no water flows through it so you know I didn't really uh, care for that so what I'm gonna do is actually run it in line with this kit because this will be 100% flow all the time and I'll, I'll see the temperature change, you know, the oil temperature will start spiking if uh, it plugs up and that'll be my clue to uh, go out and clean it up. So, uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, the uh, filter on that is serviceable, which is really cool. 
Um, so, anyways, oh yeah, so I, I got those two things, and I also bought their um, EGR Delete. I had blocked mine off, and uh, after talking with Vince uh, at IPR, he was saying that even though it's blocked off, uh, you'll still get a little bit of heat um, from the exhaust, which makes sense, but to me, I wasn't too concerned about it, just because... You know, I mean, it's not going to be a whole lot of heat, I wouldn't imagine, unless you're towing a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of weight, maybe, you know, for a long period of time, which I don't really do. Uh, if I do anything, I tow my hot rod truck here if I move or something stupid like that. So that's my project that'll be suspended for now until I get my truck back up and running. So, you know, again, 04 F250, 6 liter. Um, let's see, a couple little tricks for tearing this stuff down. Uh, this one I actually got from, uh, I think it's uh, Senior Master Tech on YouTube, uh, is to leave the coolant bottle connected, but just kind of pull it off to the side. It saves you from dumping a whole bunch more coolant out, of course. I'm going to do, uh, I bought a new thermostat and everything and housing and all that, so I lost quite a bit coming out of there, so I may actually have to go buy more coolant. I only have about a half a gallon left, so, but anyways, so that was kind of a cool tip. And then, oh, uh, so to get to the rear bolts on my intake on the passenger side the uh, exhaust actually kind of sits on that once you pull the turbo out so what I did is I just took my jack and uh, put it up underneath my truck and lifted it up from down there and gave me you know three or four inches of clearance so that was pretty pretty easy so anyways that's kind of the where we're at now so I bought a little uh, tripod thing I'm gonna try to mount it somehow in the engine bay as I work on this stuff and should go pretty quick. I'm going to read all the directions and stuff so I'm not wasting time on the video. But anyway, this will be a, kind of the intro video and uh, I'm going to go eat some dinner and then come out here and see if I can't get most or all of this stuff on and uh, maybe back up and running tonight. I don't know. We'll see. So, alright. See you guys in a little bit. Alright, one more uh, quick video here. Uh, got all the parts out and looked at them. Everything looks pretty good. So one thing I did get is the uh, upgraded oil lines for the uh, remote oil cooler. Uh, Vince threw these in uh, for an extra little fee, but you know, these things will never uh, tear up and uh, they look pretty friggin' sweet, so thought I'd do that. And eventually I may do the, uh, uh, what are they, the coolant lines on my own, but uh, for now, you know, I just want to get her up and running. So here's the uh, OEM uh, oil cooler uh, mounted to IPR's custom plate, and this is what's actually going to sit outside um, near the battery box on the passenger side so again if you ever have to service that if it ever does clog up which it shouldn't with these filters uh, then it should be really easy to replace so uh, it does come with gaskets which is kind of a bummer for me because I bought some thinking uh, well I actually had no idea that I was going to be buying this remote oil cooler to start with so that's actually kind of cool so now I have a spare I think this is the bracket that goes with that. There's my up pipe that takes out uh, the little uh, side, whatever that is, that goes into the, um, the little jet out that goes to the EGR cooler gasket. And here's their Gen 2. Uh, let's see, here's gaskets for intake and all that stuff. This is for the uh, little block off plate. This is really cool. Uh, I was looking at this, and uh, he actually talked me into buying this, like I said earlier. Uh, uh, he was saying that it does still induce a little bit of heat, you know, being connected to the exhaust and everything. And um, But this is really cool. I mean, most of the ones you see on the Internet don't look like this. They're the, just a tube, like a little U-turn tube, and can get torn up. So, uh, let's see. Dinner. Okay. Dinner time. All right, so uh, one thing I didn't guess I didn't realize was that these don't use a stock oil filter, which is kind of a bummer. I did notice when I was at checkout, uh, it asked if I wanted to buy more, and I thought, no, I'll just buy those from the local Ford dealer. And I actually have one from the Ford dealer, so that uh, won't be of any use to me anymore. But it does have a part number on here. I did see, uh, where is it? There it is. So it's just a Wix whatever number that is, 51242, five, so I'll probably buy them from IPR if I ever need another one. I'm sure I will, obviously. Uh, so here is the little uh, plate that goes in the place of the current oil cooler. 
and this actually sits in the valley of the motor uh, in front of the high pressure oil pump uh, and you know all the plumbing that you need for it more gaskets uh, that looks like some for the oil cooler and whatnot so uh, and then here's my high flow coolant filter bracket this thing that's gonna look freaking sweet whenever it's all done so that is pretty cool and I've seen pictures of that thing off to the side it looks pretty awesome so so that's it anyways just wanted to show you guys all the parts uh, yeah I realized I haven't even taken the up pipe off of the truck so <laughs> that'll be the product uh, let's see can you see it from here eh, maybe not with the light but it's back there uh, all that crap's in the way there it is down there so anyways That'll probably be the project for tonight is to try to get that exhaust swapped out. I think I'm going to pull the the whole up pipe anyways because I believe my exhaust leak that I was talking about earlier was because it wasn't lined up properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it all, take the Y pipe out, pull that out and uh, put the new up pipe on it. And then uh, I believe whenever you, if you do ever take this off, you're supposed to leave the manifold to Y pipe bolts loose and then mount it to the mount it to the turbo and then tighten all that stuff up or something I'll have to go look up all those directions but anyways we'll go through all that on video and uh, so that's pretty much it there's the uh, oil cooler the old one uh, I gotta take that out and what else so right here in this little space is where the high flow coolant filter uh, will be mounted I guess to some of those holes or brackets or something over there and then uh, right here, kind of in this space, again, we're on the passenger side, is where the uh, remote oil cooler will sit. So, look pretty cool and definitely will function pretty well. So, this is kind of an ultimate bulletproofing minus the uh, ARP studs that I've already done. So, uh, let's see, anything else? I think that's it for now. So, I'm going to go get some food. And then I'll come out here and I guess I'll film taking off the... Uh, exhaust and stuff if I can remember I gotta go get the tripod so anyways uh, we'll see you guys in a little while all right guys here we go uh, so I'm underneath the truck here looking at the uh, driver's side and uh, I'm gonna take off there's two bolts per side for the uh, uh, Y pipe or up pipe to uh, exhaust manifold so I'm gonna take these off uh, let's see what do we got here uh, I believe it's yeah 12 millimeter at least on that bolt. You know, I may have a couple different sizes on these. I can't remember. So, I got my handy air tools. So, we'll just start taking her apart. And, uh, I'll cut out all the, all the dead time and all that crap for you. So, uh, oh yeah, one cool, uh, let's see, where are we? Here we go. One cool thing I've got is these little wobbly heads. Uh, man, these are a lifesaver. See how it's not exactly square? It lets the uh, socket swivel around on that. Pick these up for like, I don't know. There was like, um, let's see, there was like 12 different ones in a set that I got from Harbor Freight for like pff, six bucks or something. It's like lifetime warranty on this stuff, so stuff like that I'd love Harbor Freight for. So, anyways, let's see if we can get these off. Now, the first one, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's kind of dark. It's right there. Um, but the one on the back side, mm, damn, may be kind of hard to get to. All right, there, it came loose a little bit. Oh, that's right, I gotta get a wrench for the top side, so. No, hold on, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, ran out of uh, space on the SD card on this thing, so I had to go delete some. Anyways, uh, so, you know, it's pretty trivial what you have to do. So those bolts have a, uh, it's a bolt that sticks through from the top and then there's a nut on the bottom side. So you got to have a wrench on top and man, it's a pain, pain to get to. So all right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to, uh, ran out of space on my camera. I had to delete some videos. Uh, anyways, uh, so I got them all four loose under there. Um, I, you know, I did this 
what was it, maybe, let's see, it was right before I moved in January, so maybe like eight months ago. Um, and man, I'll tell you, I had to use some penetrating oil to get these things loose. Uh, one of them, it was stuck bad. So I probably should use some anti-C. So what I'm going to do is go get up brand new bolts from Ford dealer and probably pay 20 bucks a bolt for these stupid things. But uh, that way they're new. I kind of rounded some of the nuts off on these. But anyways, it's a bolt that goes through on each side, uh, two of them, from the top. So you need to put a wrench on top. And then I, you know, I just used my socket or air tools if you got them uh, on the bottom to get to them. There's one that's just kind of tough to get to on the driver's side, but if you just kind of feel around for it, uh, you can get to it without having to, I didn't have to move anything or take anything off to get to all those, so anyways, uh, let's see, so I gotta take the, uh, I gotta take the EGR cooler loose from there, uh, so let me, I'm gonna pause real quick and be right back, I'm gonna get my tools. All right, back. Uh, so I had to grab some tools, but anyways. Uh, so I gotta take the EGR cooler loose, and that's that little bolt right there. I kinda do it different than, I guess, what you're supposed to do. I always pull the intake off and install the intake separate from the cooler, but lucky for me, this is the last time I will ever have to do this crap. So, uh, anyways, so I'm gonna take that bolt loose real quick. And let's see if I can get this to where, oh, look at that, perfect. This is a uh, a millimeter bolt. Let's see if I can get in there. Oh, uh, you know what? Oh, yeah, I get to show you a little trick. So, see how the exhaust is real close to it? I'm gonna go jack it up from underneath. I'll be right back. Got me a little extra room. So let's see if I can get in there with this. Okay. Air tools sure do make it easy. Let's see, I'm gonna need to go out a little bit more. EGR cooler out, so man, this light right here gets super hot. Kind of strange being fluorescent, anyways. Get the EGR cooler out. I'm just gonna pop these two bolts. I am right there and right there. Should pop right out. So let me grab those tools. These are those little uh, star, star head looking things. Let's see, where is it? these loose and then pop them the rest of the way out with the air. Nice and easy. Oh yeah, I need to uh, 
need to drain the oil before I take this cooler off. I meant to do that earlier. Oh, always something. There's my lovely red coolant. Looks clean, but from what I hear, that coolant filter will sure pick up a lot of junk. So I'm super excited to get that thing on here. Alright, let me see. I'm going to back the camera up a little bit. Let's see, put it back here, maybe. Uh, let's see. There we go. So now this thing should just pop right out. Well, I could say pop right out. You got to kind of wiggle it if you don't pull the turbo pedestal off. That's where a screwdriver comes in handy. So. Nice and easy. Okay, just gotta pop it loose from that O-ring and then it's fairly easy to get loose from there just like that. Grab the clamp. And out she comes. There it is. EGR cooler. I got mine plugged up. So let's try to get that, uh, see if we can get that white pipe out. Where are you? There it is, back there. Get loose some of this stuff out of the way so you can see. Yeah, there it is. Well, should be loose. Crawl up here in the truck. Let's see if I can get it out. Yep, it's loose. I don't remember the formula to wiggle this thing to get it out of here. Uh, let's see. Exhaust isn't in the way. Yeah, if that pipe, that exhaust pipe went in the way, it sure would be a lot easier. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I'm going to put you down here. Maybe get a better shot of this. Zoomed in a little bit far, but can't go any further out. Alright. Um. Well. I may have to take that downpipe off. Yeah, you see all the crud, all the black on that? Ugh, big exhaust leak I had. That's no bueno. Okay. Well, I don't know that I can get this thing out. It's not looking like it. Maybe if I rotate? No, I don't think that's going to work. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go let that exhaust pipe down. Maybe that'll help me get a little more angle on it. Okay. Let's see if I can get 
better angle or something on here. There, that's not too bad. All right. So I'll just let that exhaust down. Maybe I can kind of come up and over it. Oh, yeah, that gets it a little more. Now the bellows stuck on it down there. like three hands to do this. This is real snug. I guess I gotta take that up pipe off. Oh man, what a pain in the ass. You know, I think I had taken my, actually taken the down pipe off last time when I did this. Oh, I didn't want to do that though. stuck on that down pipe. Shoot. I sure didn't build these things to make them easy to work on, that's for sure. <laughs> almost have the driver's side where it's kind of poking through. There's just not quite enough room. And I don't think I can rotate it the other way. Oh man, I mean it's just right there. Just right there. So close. If I could get that spun around. almost there. Yeah, it's going to be fun putting this thing back in. I guarantee, oops. I guarantee you. Alright. Took my down pipe loose. I'm going to have to replace it after this because it's so freaking messed up down there. This thing <laughs> had better come loose. Yep, that's all it was. Cool. Well. Oh. Alright, so. Just the white pipe. I mean. I don't know, I'm not an expert on these, but the bellows and everything look okay. Uh, cool. So it doesn't look like I had an exhaust, it had an exhaust leak there. It was just 
Starting with the turbo. Look at that, son of a bitch. Well, cool. So here's what the up pipe replaces. See that? That's for the EGR cooler. Freaking stupid design. But I got lucky. Mine actually didn't have, um, well, you can't see it, but some of them have a little diverter in there. And, uh, you know, obviously that'll restrict the airflow just a tad if you have that and you block this thing off. Actually, even if you don't, it still restricts a little bit going up to the uh, turbo. So, cool. Alright, so yeah, if you left it in there, these are the bolts you'd have to get to, which are behind a heat shield. And, uh, like I said, I've had this out before. So, for me, I'd rather do the, a little extra work and get this bad boy out like this. So, alright, cool. Uh, what else we got? I gotta drain the oil. I think I may do that. Maybe bolt up this pipe, this up pipe, this new one. And call it a night. Man, I am pooped. That was a lot of work. I hate messing with that crap, but look at all the room you get in there now. So there's the uh, high pressure oil pump uh, back there. Uh, where that little silver thing's going in. It's your turbo pedestal. Uh, I got, man, I figured while I'm in here, this is the last time I'm going to do this crap. Um, hang on one sec, let me climb down. Alright, so, the only thing I didn't do that I really wish I had when I did head studs was those updated uh, stand pipes and that, what is it, an STC fitting in the back there. Um, I'm not sure if that actually applies to this year. I know it's for like the 05s. Maybe 06, 07, I'm not sure where it stops, but... Uh, so I got a new oil feed tube without that little ki that little bend in it, which is going to be kind of a bummer, but... You know, it's the updated one, they say it's better. I got the updated uh, drain tube. Uh, what else did we get? Oh, the uh, upgraded... Um, what is it, a blue or green spring kit for the uh, fuel... Uh, was that the fuel pressure regulator? That way your pressure doesn't drop at high RPM. I haven't noticed any problems with that, but again, I figured while I'm doing this, this better be the last time I go into this motor till I hit 300,000 miles. <laughs> oh yeah, holy cow, look at the firewall. I don't know if you can see that, but where it looks like a shadow, all right there, that is black. All black. Yeah, whenever I started this thing, man, I had a little hissing sound, and I knew that's an exhaust leak. And like I said, you could smell it in the cab. I didn't know where it was coming from, so. Oh, shoot, I had this thing zoomed in. Well, sorry about that. Anyways. Uh, let's take this dude in. So. Here is the replacement. Up pipe. It's going to go, bam, just like that. Cool. It'll look good for a few miles till it turns blue, I would imagine. Check out the welds in here. Mm, they look okay. They don't look too bad. I do like how big this flange is on this thing. Man. Nice and beefy. Like I said, I'm gonna go buy new bolts for this too. I'm gonna have all brand new bolts because kind of rounded out one of them. Still got it off, but I definitely had to use some penetrating oil to get that stuff off. Let me turn the radio off. Definitely had to use some penetrating oil to get that thing out. So, uh, let's see. Cool, so I'm going to bust that off, put the new one on, drain the oil. I guess I can go ahead and do this. I remember, I remember the last time I used a uh, impact wrench to get this thing off. Just made it a little easier. Bueno. All 
Alright, let's put the uh, new one on. Let's see, I think he sent me. Did he send me? Yeah, he sent me a gasket. Actually, looks like that's two gaskets. Or is that just one? I guess that's just one. Here's the new gasket. So, take the old one out, even though it's pretty much brand new. Okay. I'll go ahead and feed the bolts in. Yeah, so, uh, I had to take my downpipe off to get to this and take this out. I guess for you guys with the stock exhaust, I don't know how. I guess you do this in the truck, but <laughs> so that seems like a whole lot of work because, well, maybe, you know what? It may not be too bad. I just don't know how accessible it is behind this heat shield. I don't even know how you take the heat shield off. You know what? We'll look at that here in just a second. That way, if anybody does need to see how this is all put together, take a look at mine. Okay, let's go ahead and put her back on. I'm not going to put it on super tight, but enough to work. I guess you could bend it maybe, but so let's see if I can get to see this. So here's kind of how it sits in the truck. Ah. Yeah, that one in the back is gonna be a pain there at the bottom, right here where my fingers are. That's gonna be really hard to get to. Let's see. That's going to be pretty tough, because I don't think you can even get a wrench on on this one to hold it, which means you're going to have to do like an impact or something on that. Well, that's what it looks like, so if you got to get to it. All right, cool. Well, uh, that's all for today. I'm just going to drain the oil and freaking go take a shower, man. I'm nasty. All right, uh, I'll probably upload this tonight, and then we'll start again tomorrow.